is Kick Back and Chill. And today, Friday, November 20th, Ty has the genius in this film to discuss new music, EP, and more. Coming to you from Midtown, New York City. So kick back, relax, and have some fun, because Kick Back and Chill starts right now. It's Kick Back and Chill. I'm Day NYC, holding down in New York City. We the only show you can kick back, relax, and have some fun and highlight some of your upcoming success. And there's always a guest that's special that's stopping by and I'm ready to bring it out. He's been killing the music scenes with his new EP, You Ain't Gotta Believe. Plus, he's hitting the stage later on today. Show some love for Ty as the genius. What's going on, bro? What's going on, bro? Yeah. Uh, chilling, man. Ah. Tired of genius in the building at the yeah, function. Yeah. How you feel? How's the commute here? I feel good, man. The commute wasn't that bad, but an hour and a half. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Listen, man, I'm excited to have you, man. Your new EP out now. You ain't gotta believe streaming on all platforms, man. Great artwork, great form of work. Appreciate you. you know what I'm saying, but first, let's just get started with um, what made you want to get into music. Um, I've been doing music since I was a kid. I watched my father do it. He had a group called Crisis with a K. It was him, two of my uncles. Um, mm -hmm. So I've been around it my whole life, going to the studio since I was five, six years old, writing raps, doing all that dancing, everything. So I've just mm -hmm. been around music for a long time. Oh, that's good. That's good. Now, you know, the new EP, You Ain't Gotta Believe, um, 10 songs on there is killing it right now. But tell us what the process was like, you know, creating the EP, um, like what was going through your mind. And, you know, the ladies on there as well, you know, you got yeah. your family. Like what Facts. was the process with creating the whole EP and just the artwork itself? So um, You Ain't Gotta Believe is pretty self-explanatory. Um, I gave people the option to either believe in what I got to do or spectate what they're going to see. Right, right, so, right. So um, I just always felt like I wanted to use that to fuel myself. I found that I'm like, right, I know some people going to think my dreams are far-fetched. and Absolutely. So what? That's cool. You don't have to believe. And that's why I put those people on my cover because they're the ones who believe in me the most. And um, the process of going through it, <clears throat> I was just picking out beats and I was just trying to find different vibes. I wanted to show my versatility, so that was like my, my biggest thing. Mm -hmm. Wanted to make sure every song was something different, with a yeah, different was. feel. You feel me? Yeah. I, one thing I like, I like the whole track, but my favorite right there is even if, like, it gives off a nice vibe. Yeah. Like you cruising on the highway, you know, even yeah, and, you know facts. what I mean. So, you know, what I'm saying like, but you did it all by yourself. You didn't have no features, and I that think was that was really too. that. I think that was like one of the biggest things because you came out and, like you said, you showed your versatility and you showed people that hey, listen. Regardless of what you do, I'm still going to keep going. I'm still going to keep working. I got my family behind me. I got my team supporting me. Facts. And that's all that matters. That's good. That's good. Now, you know, as an artist, there's always that question of um, should I get signed or should I remain independent? Which is which is the route that you want to choose as you progress within your music career? Um, we thought about that a lot. And, um, oh, really? <laughs> we yeah. want to we wanna remain independent. Okay. What, what? Why, though? Because uh, I just see how it is now. Like, I just see you don't really need the industry for too many things, except for, like, distribution. Maybe they can help you get out to different countries and things of that nature. But we shoot our own videos, videos that could be ready to go on BET, MTV. And it, it's, it's, it's a lot less of a budget. Mm -hmm. um, we record our own music, take our own pictures. We do all of that. So I'm like, we don't really need a big label to do those things for us. We just really need y'all for distribution, help us out, and, and, and marketing, for that matter. So I just want, I want to keep it independent because I have right, more right. control over what I want to do. I don't yeah, want nobody telling me yeah. and, and everything. And Facts. you know, you know, I think a lot of um, artists um, don't understand that. They, they think of these big time records, So So Def, Columbia Record, Indie, um, Interscope, Def Jam, and many others. They sell these labels. They go, oh, I want to get signed with that. But they're not understanding the pros and cons that come with, you know, joining a label. Because once you sign that dotted Facts. line... Some you're of those pretty dudes much get a slave to them. Yeah, you're locked get, in. You're locked in. You know, and a lot of people, it's kind of like very similar to a bank. They'll fund the music video, studio time, but they want their money you want back. They bread back. So I, I, I believe it's very important as an artist, you know, to always educate yourself before you sign that dotted line. Having a great manager, Facts. you know, on your side, having your family supporting you and believing you. But you know, that's good to know. Like an artist like yourself who works extremely hard, you know, wants to remain independent along the way. Things might change. You yeah. know, you know, things come up, uh -huh. and um. At some point, you know, you'll continue to figure out, you know, like if this is one of the route you want to continue to go because you never know things that could pop up. Absolutely. You know, now with the new EP and along with many other singles that you've had, I'm pretty sure you performed at like multiple venues, mm -hmm. you know, th before COVID. Cause, you know, yeah, COVID facts, put everything yeah. at a standstill. Yeah. But tell us about the first venue you ever performed. What was going through your mind? What was the experience like and how was it? The I don't mean to put you on the spot like that. I <laughs> ever performed. I was younger. I was younger. But um, speaking into the or last any two recent, years yeah. of me, of me yeah. like going in. It's around when I first came home, a couple of my guys took me out. I performed with these with with, with, with my hula gang bros. Okay. We performed some I think it was like Bound Brook or something like that. And um 
the venue was dope because it wasn't even my song I was doing. I was there to do a feature. So it was kind of to get my feet wet. They're like, yo, come through, see how I feel. I know right, you, right. you've been away for a minute. I want you to get that energy. We got on stage and rocked it. They showed mad love. And after that, I'm like, let's go. I want to I want to perform all the time now. That, but that also gave you, like, the, you know, that push. To Facts, like, yeah, I want to push, you know, yeah. do music full time. Because I had, I, had I had people in my corner. I seen them doing it, too. So I'm like, right, they up here. They doing these shows. They getting lit. Now I'm, I'm watching their movements. I'm peeping how they do things, learning from their mistakes. And I'm like, yeah, I wanna, I'm going to take all of that and use that in all my next performances. That's good. Man. I'm loving it. Man, this dude got a dope ass story, yeah, man. Word. That's good. I'm, so, I'm happy for you, man. Good luck, bro. Now, you know, what would you say is like some of the challenges you probably face when, you know, creating the records, you know, the EPs and so much more as an artist, you know, unsigned artist out um, here in this game? Creating, um, I have I have certain things that, that's harder for me to do when it's when it's when when it comes to writing music. Okay. Like um Certain songs, like when it comes to like a lady vibe, that's easier for me. When it comes to talking about the streets, it's easier for me. Mm -hmm. But then I'm like, when it comes to storytelling, I gotta take my time a little more. I gotta replay conversations in my head. So oh, wow. I, I gotta be more. That's, that dedicated. gotta be a lot. Yeah, yeah, I gotta be more dedicated to writing like that. Mm -hmm. So um, those are like the biggest problems I faced. And as far as like finding beats, um, I wanted to make sure every beat stood out and and match the vibe because that's usually how I write. I listen to the beat and the beat will tell me where I want to go. So yeah, absolutely. And I think what audience people like the audience needs to understand like your fans and everybody needs to understand like when you're finished when you're when you submit a record for distribution whether it's an ep album just a single whatever you listen to this song countless numbers of times, hella times. to us it's like oh this is fire y'all want to listen to it man like like when i've heard um your ep you ain't gotta believe to me i'm like oh even if it's hard don't got don't even trip you know the whole thing but it's like too you listen to that multiple yeah, multiple times time, you know tell me what, what is your reaction your like when you see all the the stories and people's tagging you and they bumping your song when they cruising to work or going out and about like how you be feeling man? it's love it feel good man because that's what i do it for i i want to i want to be relatable absolutely I bro to put on a song and be like damn this is my mood right now let me play this and yeah. they tag me and i'm like damn i just made somebody day so yeah. that shit feel good yeah that's good that's good bro now what i also want to know is like a lot of artists nowadays in my opinion you know they say they want to they say they want to make in this industry but they're not willing to sacrifice the time energy and money that it deserves i really just want you to you know stress the importance of why sacrifice is extremely important and if you don't do those things you're not gonna be able to you're not gonna survive in this industry hey yo, I, I i had to leave my other job that's how Damn. that's how real that's how <laughs> real it was that we like yo, we believe in this process and of course we had a game plan too, because now I started my own business, me and my cousin. Um, so now we're doing our merch. We got it. We just got our store, past inspection. So we got a lot of good things oh, going on. Black yeah, business, clap yourself yeah, too, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Facts. So we got a lot of good things going on. But beforehand, when I was working, 50, 60 hours a week, I had time to do nothing. We turned it down venues, and and I'm like, I want to be a part of all of this. I'm missing out. Those five, six, you don't know who in the audience. So I'm like, look, we're gonna bite down. We gotta come up with a game plan. It did take money, so you gotta have a team of people that that's willing to pitch in and sacrifice in. But at least you had a plan, you know. You know what I'm saying? Before you took that leap Facts, of faith, because yeah. a lot of people they just like, I'm quitting this job. I don't got time for this, right? But see, what's different is you is just like you had a larger vision. You know what I mean? And when it came to saying, you know what, this music is really taking off for me. I see the progression. It's time for me to just step back. Hey, it was nice knowing you guys, yeah, get but I in. need to transition to music full Facts. time because I see the things. Congrats on the new business, you know, the inspection. And I, I can't wait to see it. Hopefully, you know, when I'm in Jersey, I get to yeah, stop by, you know, up, check, man. you know, we, you we know what I'm saying? There. Appreciate that. <laughs> but, you know, speaking of, you know, for all the, you know, the love and support you gave with the music, you even got love from DJ Drewski, man. He's playing your song on the radio. Yeah, even if, like, love, yeah. How did you connect with him? <laughs> um, the first time we connected with Drewski, we did a showcase. And um, it was a showcase for my man Jones. Drewski was there. He heard us. Mm -hmm. Then we were submitting music to him. We was on his heels. We was just tagging him in anything. Like, submit. Yeah, submit. Tag submit, Juicy. Submit. Tag Juicy. Yeah, tag Juicy. Okay. And then we submitted a song to, um, he got this thing called The New Movement, where he just listened to all unsigned artists. We sent the song. He was feeling, they had, they had a discussion mm -hmm. about the song. And from there, it just kind of took off. Like, now he knew my name. I was popping up the venues he was at. He see me. I'm making sure he see my face, hearing my music. After that, he was like, yo, come through. We had to sit down. He, he liked even if he even connected me with the engineer, I mean, with the producer who made the beat. I didn't even know the producer. I just bought the beat, and we started rocking with it. He like, I know this guy. He, did he hear the trunk? He called him FaceTime. I'm like, oh, yeah, let's go. See. Yeah. But you see, you mentioned something interesting, how you wanted to, you you made sure that Drewski, Drewski saw your face. He heard your music. That's great use of marketing, because after a while, 
videos come into play, word of mouth. Facts. Yo, I know this kid named Ty has the genius, Facts. man. He's really good. New EP is out now. Check him out. After a while, people start following you on social media. They know about you. They start hearing your tracks. So it's kind of like all the connections were happening and within one venue. And it's, it's crazy to say you say you had to leave your job and transition. Like, that's crazy. You know Facts. what I'm saying? Because... You just left, and it was kind of like, I'm sorry, but hey, at least I had a plan, and I took that leap of faith, and I did it. You know, so that's amazing, and I wish Word you, I really love the fact that you, you know, you're really you, doing, you know, doing your thing. But, you know, outside of music, you know, is there any hobbies that you get yourself into? Like, is there anything that really keeps you going outside of music when you just mean like, yo, I need to take um, a break and do my thing? Being around the family, I love going around my family. Laughing, okay, joking, cool. and chilling with them. Um, I used to play ball heavy, so I messed up my knee. I was a ball player yeah, too. But I, I, love, I had to put I the ball, ball down. Yeah, NBA fact. dream wasn't, wasn't <laughs> fact, happening. Fact, yeah, yeah that, that 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 might um take away from what I'm doing now. But um, yeah. yeah, I just I'm, I'm a chill dude. I be mad relaxed. I don't really do too much. I okay. breathe. So I like to be around people who I've been with, and just enjoy their company. I like right. seeing them happy. You feel me? So. All right, cool, man. Well, listen, I got Ty as a genius still in the building, and he will be performing later on throughout the show. So keep it locked and yeah, stay yeah. tuned. Let's go.